down right now and listen to me. Hey peeps, this is Dan and uh, today I'd like to share with you a little project I have worked on here for a couple months now and this is my oil burner and we'll have a look at uh, how I started, what you need to do to build one and uh, a few more details about it. It's uh, still not complete, it's kind of an ongoing project but um, it is working pretty darn good and um, specs are 300 degrees Celsius average, 500 tops, smoke is alright. Um, Oil consumption about a liter an hour. All right, so it's not freezing yet. It's uh, nine degrees thereabouts, nine degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, so this is what I go do to uh, start it. Safety pin. Take the pan out, and we'll have a look. And we can see this is. Um, from an hour and a half burning. We'll clean that up. Alright, so obviously depending on the kind of oil you're running in this it's gonna get more or less filthy but essentially um, some kind of paper or cloth trench it in some oil here. You take the flamer nice little torch and uh, we need to get that <coughs> that oil really hot so it stays burning by itself. So this is what you don't want to see in the kitchen. Then it should stay burning, and I'll slowly crank up the uh, the oil. Obviously, there's no oil flow yet. Turn on the main valve. Open up so it starts dribbling oil. And she's firing up. So right now I always started on a slow dribble here because there's lots of oil when I fired up. some backfire because there's too much oil in there right now. And that is the oil that I added uh, to start off the process as well as the oil that's dripping in and it's just uh, as it's getting up to temperature it will uh, burn off quick. Already at 100 degrees Celsius. It's up pretty quickly. Essentially on a low setting the uh, burner is running at about 300-350 de uh, degrees Celsius and um, when it's burning real clean it's about 500 but uh, it, it heats up the garage to about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius which is too much. And now that basically most of that oil has burned off and it has calmed down you can hear by the draft I'm just um, increasing the drip a little more. This really is the part that bothers me the most about a drip feed system is styling it in, um, especially with the change in temperature and the viscosity of the oil. 
It takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the pan and the uh, brake disc to get up to temperature. And that changes things drastically. And once it's done its initial burning, 150, I just uh, crank it down a little more. Until I get the burn I want. So right now it's uh, not even a drip anymore, it's constant. Uh, constant stream, a real small stream. Now this is about the worst it gets while it's uh, firing decently. Uh, it will still get a little bit better but uh, there's always gonna be smoke and uh, cleaning has to happen daily ideally. For this project I had a plasma cutter which helped me a ton. It's uh, very easy to do. You also need a welder. Um, then I found myself some scrap metal, including a, a propane tank, cut a couple pieces off of it. Uh, some of it I could even reuse. Uh, find mus find found myself an enclosed brake disc and a cast iron pan, which turned out to not work very well as it takes way too long to heat up. But basically just got an idea how to put it together. Here I tried the uh, just a steel pan to... Uh, see how it would burn and um, yeah it got to temperature way quicker and burnt way nicer um, then I basically welded up a few things and started putting together the main shape of the burner I um, had the footing welded onto it and uh, started basically on my trials with airflow and um, yeah just to see how it would get up to temperature with the cast iron pan there and uh, wouldn't work for me and uh, changed it to the steel pan and uh, that worked pretty good. This is I think about 10 minutes in and it burnt clean. I added a pipe right through the middle right there and welded it in. I welded the uh, retainers for the, the pan and the legs around the vessel. I will just eyeballed that in there and um, also played around with some more airflow. I ended up cutting a whole bunch more holes into it. Smaller but more holes. Um, there I'm trying it as well. Got it up to temperature and um, yeah added some more spaces on the legs to keep the temperature away from the, the concrete. The floor it gets uh, pretty pretty hot. The pan gets red hot. Um, this is about 550 degrees Celsius burning full bore and this is about 400 degrees burning really clean. Uh, this is still outside trial run. Uh, it's about 500 degrees there and the paint peeled right off. Nice and hot. I added an exhaust and ran it outside uh, of the garage and um, added the drip system. There still with the wire and um, yeah did my trial runs and got her to temperature and played with the drip system and that was about the bigger pain but I got her going now. The dis the drip system itself I left open like this so not only when I fire it up I can see how much oil flow is actually occurring but also um, as a safety precaution uh, because if there's any kind of flashback it will pop out of here and not go all the way through the uh, the pipe back into the reservoir and uh, right now the way it is I can uh, unhook the chimney the exhaust pipe and I can just move this out of the way just loosen the fitting roll it out of the way and then uh, this whole system is completely serviceable completely mobile it's not bolted down which is maybe a lack of a safety feature but it's not gonna go anywhere anyways it can't can't tip like this not possible in my case I built the uh, drip system so that it's a heavy pipe real heavy pipe pipe and uh, I welded that in place and um, I try and get rid of the heat from welding it to that steel leg number one and as I increase in height I also increase in distance just to uh, so I can dissipate the heat from uh, obviously being contacted right there and then going out because I don't want the oil to burn back into uh, the pipe 
So having a heavy pipe there, I think, gives me more confidence that it won't backfire. Although it's unlikely in the first place, but this way it's definitely not possible. What I do right here now is, uh, with the help of a fan, I increase the heat dispersion. It's blown a little bit into this angle piece of scrap I put on the end of the pipe, so it directs some of that hot air right through that pipe and out of the uh, front of it. And it's quite effective heating like this, as well as keeping the heat away from the wall. The uh, safety features I have yet to install is a casing, just so the wood here is safe, as well as the back wall. It needs some rock sheet, some fireproofing, and obviously that pipe needs to be properly supported. One of the uh, most important things is that uh, you have yourself a complicated looking drawing and uh, that is what I started off with so I kind of knew which way I wanted to go but not everything went into it alright so on average right now we got about 400 degrees on the burner bottom end of the uh, vessel about 200 at the uh, deflector pipe so right there 200 at the uh, exhaust chimney also 200 three feet up on the chimney and then right at by the uh, by the window we got whoop, 126 on the pipe and then 32 on the uh, the metal. So some advice I can give um, don't make the air holes for the draft on the burner too big but have plenty of holes so that with the uh, increase of temperature and the increase in air speed uh, the draft the fresh air can actually get to the burner and you'll get the cleaner burn also with a pan underneath cast iron on a small burner doesn't seem to work very well because of temperature issues and uh, steel pan just heats up quicker Another recommendation, if you can find a small ball valve, you're better off than with a gate valve. Uh, those valves, when they open, they open too far. They're uh, impossible to uh, regulate, especially half inch. You will not get a slow drip out of that. I mean, you can watch the flames when you can see the interior of your burner. It's a slow burn, and also the, uh, of course, the noise that it makes. This burner is capable of um, is capable of 500 degrees Celsius on the vessel when I run it max, but it will smoke more. So let's add too much oil. Get down!
So reasons for backfire like that, too much oil or not enough of a draft, so not enough air holes. That's never a good thing. And that concludes today's video. Thank you very much for watching.